This is Seopolis. This is a brand new 1.16.5 questing mod pack. And the idea of this pack is that we start in this fairly big sphere underwater. And we're actually fairly high up in the world. If you look under the minimap there, we are at Y level 131. So uh, the ocean does come up quite far, um, but we're not completely submerged. If you can see right uh, up at the top there, there is actually a little bit of the outside world. So we're just barely under the sea level. And uh, it does, of course, go all the way down, uh, presumably to Y level zero. By default, you can uh, open your inventory and there is a quest book in the top left here that you can click to get all of the quests. Alternatively, if you go to options, controls and type in quest, you can go ahead and set a key so that when you click that key, it automatically opens up the quest book so you don't have to go into your inventory every single time you want to check a quest. For me, I'm going to go ahead and set that to the grave key, which is the key under uh, escape on the keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and type in FTB Ultimine uh, because this is also by default set to grave. Uh, I'm going to change that to a button on my mouse. Uh, and apparently button four is also already connected to something. So I'm going to quickly go and disable that. There we go. For those who don't know, FTB Ultimine is a super nifty mod that allows you to break multiple of the same block at a time. So if I come over here, hold down my FTB Ultimine key and break this log. When we break the one log, all of the rest of the logs break. So we'll go ahead and replant the, uh, the old oak sapling there. Uh, we do also start with two items. We have materials and you from Tinker's Construct, which we'll come back to a little bit later on in the playthrough when we get started making Tinker's tools. And we also have the One Probe Readme. Uh, the One Probe is the mod that adds that little box in the top left that tells you what you're currently looking at. And uh, if you shift right click this, you can actually configure how that box looks. Personally, I quite like to go with the full transparent style. So now whenever I look at something, there's no box around in that top left corner. It's just the text. I quite like that. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and make it just a little bit smaller with this uh, subtraction there as well. Perfect. Um, I believe we do have tree growing simulator. So as we uh, shift, the tree here will grow more quickly. And again, we can repeat the process here of tearing it down using FTB Ultimine. And uh, I guess before we go any further, we should probably take a quick look at the quest book here and kind of give a bit of a... Uh, an overview of the mod pack, right? So there are quite a few quests. Uh, there are, I believe, 111 mods in total. Uh, yeah, this screen has a lot of information on it, but about halfway down on the right, you can see it's got uh, 111 mods loaded. And there's quite a few mods in here. Not a ton though, it's fairly light um, as far as mod packs go. Uh, we've got a bunch of tech mods. The pack does have some changed recipes. So for example, if we look at like the pulverizer from Thermal Expansion, this recipe here, by default is, I think, standard. This looks like a normal pulverizer recipe. However, the recipe for the machine frame has been tweaked. So it requires some electron plates, some iron plates, and a bronze gear. And I believe another tweak that has been made, uh, yeah, is that you do have to make these uh, bronze gears and presumably all of the gears in the pack using either Tinker's Construct or Thermal Expansion. You can't just craft those manually like you sometimes can do in other mod packs. And I think as well, if we look at something like refined storage, I'm pretty sure that, again, the base recipe is kind of standard, but the recipe for the machine casing has been tweaked to require that previous machine frame. And so you do have to kind of uh, automate the production of these machine frames before you move on uh, into some of those other mods, which I'm all about. I love a little bit of automation in my, uh, in my mod packs. And uh, yeah, there's a ton of stuff. This pack is still in alpha at the time of me recording this first episode here. And so things are still a bit of a work in progress. Mods could be added, mods could be removed. Recipes could change, all that jazz. Uh, so just bear that in mind. So to start things off, the first quest line has an information book. It says, welcome to Seopolis, a water-based questing mod pack. Uh, quests like this, you can just tick and we get a C book, I believe, as a reward, which is kind of like a currency that the game is going to use. There is a shop right down at the bottom here that we'll come back to in just a second. We then have read the quests, telling you to read the quests as you go. Always good advice. Uh, chapter challenges. So completing chapter challenges will give you special rewards. So at the end of each chapter, you have like the, the standard quests and then every chapter has chapter challenges, which are quests that you can do if you want to give yourself a bit of a challenge for some extra rewards, which is pretty cool. Uh, a nice little mechanic there. I'll take my free book. FTB quests allows you to share your progress with friends. Sure. Uh, FTB Ultimine, as I mentioned before, allows you to uh, break multiple blocks at once. Very good. 
C-Books are the currency that can be used to buy items in the shop. If we press J, we can open up the full screen version of Journey Map, which is the mini map we have in the top right hand corner. That might come in a little bit more useful later on down the line. Um, I don't know how far along the mod pack is in terms of its development, but the pack page does mention uh, like custom structures and different enemies available, like actually in the water. So we might have to do a little bit of exploration later on down the line. And remember, you have two blocks above sea level, which is safe. Anything above that is toxic air, which will poison you. Look at that. Chapter one, or information complete. Beautiful. So if I'm not mistaken, down here at the bottom, we do have a trapdoor from Block Carpentry that's made to look like glass. And we can actually leave our little dome here, or a little sphere, I should say, right out of the gate. And if we swim on up to the surface, by default, we're perfectly fine. Like you can stand here and nothing bad is gonna happen. However, if we go even just one block up, I think we're gonna start taking damage because I'm fairly certain that a Minecraft character is two blocks high. So I think up here, oh no, maybe, oh yeah, there you go. So if you, if you get out of the block and jump, you start to take the damage from the toxic air. So uh, I think that's kind of to encourage you to, uh, to stay underwater where possible. Um, although, if we go and take a look at the uh, the shop, which is right down at the bottom here, uh, right now this, again, is still a work in progress. Uh, when I first started playing this pack, which was only a few days ago, uh, there was only this item here, so the pack has updated a few times since then to add more options. Uh, right now, you can either buy uh, animal seeds, which I assume are going to come in super useful later on if we need specifically uh, a pig or maybe a feather in the form of a chicken uh, or slime seeds that could be super useful for slime balls and whatnot. Uh, so we might want to save up for this. I'm assuming that this is a repeatable quest to where we could buy all of these seeds if we had enough sea books. Um, there's also a solar panel and a wind turbine, which are just basic uh, mechanism power generators and uh, nothing too crazy there. Uh, but this guy, the scale, provides protection against the toxic air. And so as soon as you get 50 sea books, uh, right now we have nine, but once we get to 50, we could potentially uh, acquire this guy, and then we should be able to build a little higher uh, than the default two blocks above uh, above the surface. So let's head on back inside. I don't think there's really much point of us being up on the surface just yet. And let's begin working through uh, this first quest line, shall we? So we've actually done a few of these quests already. Uh, we haven't managed to get an apple yet, although presumably uh, that should happen fairly soon here. Um, we do have Tinker's Construct in this. However, it looks like maybe we don't have access to the crafting station or maybe the recipe has been tweaked. I see. Okay. So the crafting station uh, now requires a log and then a pattern or a regular crafting table and a pattern. Um, a blank pattern can be made with two sticks and two planks. Now, Tinker's Construct has had a pretty big uh, kind of revamp with 1.16. So there is some new stuff. For example, one of the first new things here, uh, you now get three patterns as opposed to one for every recipe. Presumably that's going to be for a uh, for a, a given reason. We'll find out later on down the line. But uh, if we go ahead and do something like this and like this, we get a crafting station, which for those who don't know, is basically just a better version of the vanilla Minecraft crafting table. Uh, not only can you leave items in it. So for example, let's say I start a crafting recipe and then realize that I'm missing something. I can go away, come back, and the craft is still in there, which is super useful. But on top of that, uh, you can also put down inventories next to the crafting station. So let's say I throw down a chest right about here and I put a few items in there. Um, now, inside of the regular crafting station, I can see everything that is inside of that chest. And even better, if we go ahead and do something like this, let's say I want to make another chest. Because I have the wood in here, all I have to do, type in chest, I can just shift left click on the move items plus button here, and it will move those items from the adjacent chest over into the crafting station, which is super useful. It means later on down the line when we're doing more complex recipes, because of course we don't need to do this uh, for a chest, but later on down the line uh, when we're doing more complex recipes, we can just shift right click, and if we have the resources in an adjacent inventory, it will just work, which is, uh, which is super nice. So that is that quest complete. We also got a quest for the chest, store that stuff. Uh, and then we have three quests to choose from. Uh, we have a wooden shears quest, a bull quest, and a wooden crook quest. So the crook is a super nifty item here. This allows you to get more from your, uh, from your leaves. Now, normally we would uh, just break the log and because we have a mod called Fast Leaf Decay installed, uh, the leaves disappear very quickly and you get some saplings, occasionally an apple, and that's all well and good. However, with the wooden crook, you can go ahead and break all of the leaves. Again, I'm holding down the FTB Ultimine key here. 
if you don't use it, you'll just break one leaf, but uh, if you hold down the key, you can break all the leaves. And this is not only gonna give you more saplings, but it's also gonna give you more apples. And most importantly, it's gonna give you these guys, silkworms from Ex Nihilo. And these are super useful. And I didn't mean to click that, but uh, by the way, if you hit Z, it opens up this little menu. Uh, the idea here, just to show you how it works, uh, you could hit Z and then if I hit one, it will swap my hotbar with the first line of my inventory, like that. Uh, if I do it with like two, it'll give me the second line. And so if you want to quickly swap items in your inventory, you can press Z and then one, two or three. I don't find it too useful. Honestly, I probably won't do it too often, but it's there uh, if we need it. And uh, yeah, these silkworms, which I'm assuming there might be a quest for that is indeed can be used to get string. So uh, the way this works is uh, let's quickly go ahead and craft up a hatchet. Uh, I assume we will be getting rid of this fairly shortly and replacing it with a, a tinker's tool. But uh, essentially, if we plant a tree, and I do a little bit of shifting here, we can right click the silkworm onto a leaf and you'll see in the top left there that that leaf is now an infested leaf or an infesting leaf and it has a bit of a progress bar. Once that progress reaches 100%, this will turn into an infested leaf and will begin spreading its infestation to adjacent leaves, which in turn will become uh, infested or will start becoming infested. And when they become infested, they'll spread it further. And once all of these are infested, we can go ahead and break it. And instead of getting saplings, we will get string, which is going to help us for this quest and is also going to get us a fishing rod, uh, which apparently will get us a range of different items. And um, I guess most importantly, could also give us food as well. Somebody in the Twitch chat asked if this pack has cooked apples. Unfortunately, I don't think it does. Yeah, no, there's no cooked apples in here. So some mod packs have an item where you can just smelt an apple and it becomes this really good food source. Unfortunately, not available in this mod pack. We're going to have to live with regular apples. But uh, once this is done, we can once again use the crook, break all these leaves, and boom, look at that. We have 41 string and we got even more silkworms. So let's head on over here. Let's get a uh, fishing rod real quick. Mostly just to complete the quest, but presumably we might need it fairly soon. And maybe we'll do a bit of fishing just to relax a little bit later on in today's stream. Now, over here, we have wooden shears, which act as regular shears would. The upside is that they're a lot cheaper and they don't require any iron. And they're also super easy to make. Look at that. Boom. Uh, I also think they have a much lower, uh, a much lower durability than uh, regular shears do. But once again, uh, if we hold down the Ultimine key, boom, we can just get all of these leaves and that is important because we're about to hit one of the first custom recipes in the pack, and that is vines. So you can craft up one vine using three leaves. So if we do something like this, we get a vine. So that is all three of these quests complete. Beautiful. Uh, over here, the wooden bowl recipe, I don't think has been changed. It hasn't. And I'm pretty sure that in terms of getting this water bowl here, we should just be able to right click Oh no, we have to, I think we have to drop this in water. Yeah, there we go. And now we have a water bowl. Now I'm not quite sure if the science on this adds up, but uh, according to the quest book, drinking this will give you water breathing for 50 seconds. So if you drink this, not only is it, is it like an incredible source of food because it's basically uh, free and unlimited, but uh, on top of that, it also gives you water breathing for 50 seconds. So if we go underwater, we of course uh, don't actually start to lose, if we can get down there, that is, there we go. And uh, we don't actually start to lose uh, any of those bubbles above our hunger bar for, you know, 50 seconds after we drink the water. And presumably we could carry like a bunch of these balls uh, filled with water around with us to kind of top up that as we go. So that seems pretty useful, especially if we do have to do uh, some more exploration in the future. And the only two quests left for uh, starting up here are the quest for wool and the sleepy time quest. So I'm going to assume that the quest for wool requires just four string. And then the sleepy time quest probably requires a bed. Nice. So we'll quickly claim the quest rewards here. And then onto wooden tech. So this one starts with the wooden hopper, a basic hopper that puts items in and takes items out. So uh, much like with the wooden shears, this is just a kind of downgraded version of a regular Minecraft hopper that is significantly easier for us to make, especially uh, in the early game here. Boom and boom. From there, we have two quests. We have one to make a wooden barrel and one to make a sieve. So the wooden barrel is really useful because it allows us to make dirt 
And of course, the more dirt that we can make, the more trees that we can plant at once. Um, and using the shift mechanic, we can grow like nine or 20 or 30 trees simultaneously and then try and cut all of those down using FTB Ultimine. So I think it is probably worth going for this barrel first. Uh, super easy to make, by the way, just uh, six planks and one oak slab. And the way this works is you basically can put almost any plant matter into the wooden barrel and it will turn into dirt. And if I'm not mistaken, if you type in uh, dirt in JEI here, it should tell us what we can put in. Yeah, so we can put in apples, any kind of fish, silkworms, and any kind of leaf. Okay, so it's a little bit more restrictive than some of the previous packs I've played. Like normally you can put saplings in, uh, but the good news is that we can put leaves in. And of course, each uh, tree that we cut down or each tree that we use a wooden shear on gives us a bunch of oak leaves. And if I'm not mistaken, it should be eight oak leaves. One, two, three, four. Ooh, it's been buffed. Okay, so four oak leaves to one dirt, which is actually super useful. It means that each tree we tear down using a wooden shear should give us about 11 blocks of dirt, which is super nice. And of course, from there, if we quickly grab some kind of pickaxe, what we should be able to do is break a bit of the, uh, the old terracotta and expand out our uh, tree growing platform. So I think we'll go for nine out of the gate here. We could always add more uh, dirt in the future, should we wish. And uh, now if we do something like this, we can of course shift. We might be a bit too close here because we might get stuck under a tree, although no, it looks like we are doing just fine. That final tree there should grow although it might just be a little light on space. Uh, but essentially, as you can see here, this is not particularly useful for getting a ton of uh, leaves, although it does give you more leaves. It's mostly useful for getting a ton of wood because now we have so many oak logs uh, in the middle there and uh, we can go ahead and harvest all of those at the same time. Um, I will go ahead and grab some more leaves. Perfect. And then we'll go ahead and do something like this. And look at that. We got like almost a stack of logs from uh, one quick block break. So uh, let's go ahead and claim that uh, reward there. They do want us to make 16 dirt here. We do have nine. Um, but what we could do if we wanted to make things a little quicker here is we could go ahead and make a few more barrels. We're of course not limited uh, to just having one. We could put down a few more of these here and then of course grab all those leaves and uh, begin filling all of these up. We only need seven more plus the, uh, the nine that we have here and that should be this quest complete. Uh, there's also a quest for a flopper which is, I believe, a fluid hopper. Uh, place a flopper into the sea and a barrel underneath it, it will fill the barrel with water. Ooh, that's very interesting, actually, uh, because normally you have to wait for rain in order to get water into a barrel. The fact that we can do that using a flopper is going to make getting clay a lot easier in the future. Unless the recipe has changed, usually you get clay or blocks of clay by putting dust yeah into a barrel with water uh, we don't quite have access to dust just yet um, although i assume that will be coming fairly soon yeah we've got the stone hammer and uh the cobblestone hammering coming later on uh, in this quest line here to make a flopper we need three wooden hoppers and one wooden barrel that actually seems very doable uh, that is a dirt so let's quickly go ahead and just grab all of those beautiful that is the mini dirt factory quest taken care of uh, we can then go and drop these back down. I think we'll come back to the uh, the flopper because we can't really use that just yet um, until we need water in a barrel, but uh, we will bear that in mind. Uh, down here we have the sieve recipe, which has been tweaked. It says basic sieves need a mesh to work. You can connect up to a three by three of sieves together uh, to sieve all at the same time. Um, so by the way, you may notice whenever I click on a recipe, for some reason, I think it's a, a bug with JEI, um, it kind of skips past, like it, it double clicks. So like I click on the sieve to see the sieve recipe, uh, but then what happens is it clicks on the plank. So it clicks on the sieve and then it clicks again on the plank and then shows like this recipe. Uh, the way that you can get around that is you just hit backspace. So if it go, you click on what you want to see, if it goes too far, you can click backspace and it will take you back a recipe. So this is the actual recipe that I'm looking for here. Uh, to make a sieve, we need four planks and three wooden hoppers. All of that seems extremely doable. Uh, the wooden hopper did require a chest, so we are going to need three of those. One, two, three. Uh, then we'll do something like this. One, two, three. And from there, we should have everything to make a regular old sieve. Nice. Now, as the quest book does mention, we do need meshes. Uh, the first basic mesh here is the string mesh, which is made with four string 
and five vines. So this is a custom recipe and is of course why there is also a custom recipe for vines. So let's get five of those. Let's do boom and boom. And there we go. We have a string mesh. So now if we go ahead and place this guy down and drop the string mesh in, we should then be able to begin sifting. So sifting dirt from a string mesh will get you different types of pebbles. So we need andesite, diorite, granite, and stone pebbles, and all of those can be acquired by sieving dirt. Each one has a 70% chance, apart from the stone pebble, which has a 100% chance, times two, and a 50% chance. So I think we're guaranteed to get two stone pebbles with every dirt that we sieve, and then there's a 50% chance, of course, to get an extra third uh, stone pebble. So well, let's go ahead and do a little bit of sifting here. So that quest is complete, beautiful. Uh, we also have an all the samplings quest. You can sieve leaves in a string mesh to get different acorns. Right click them on dirt to get saplings. Ooh, okay. This is probably gonna be quite useful as we begin to expand out the base. Um, I think I will try where possible to expand out the base underwater. I really like the idea of having this kind of big sprawling underground base. We might even stick with the kind of sphere design and just build like bigger spheres, um, you know, down and around and connecting up to this pre-existing sphere. People in the Twitch chat are asking if you can rapid sieve. So uh, in the last mod pack that I played, Skybees, um, I used a macro on my keyboard, which allows me to right click very quickly. Um, that did work in, uh, in previous versions of uh, Ex Nihilo, uh, Ex Nihilo Sequentia. Unfortunately, it doesn't work anymore. They did patch that out. Uh, so now if you try and right click very quickly, which I'll do now, um, it doesn't actually do anything. It might be a little bit faster looking at that progress bar there than just doing it normally but it's nowhere near as fast as it used to be, unfortunately. So uh, while you can kind of do it a bit faster, it's it's not quite like as instantaneous as, uh, as it used to be in, in older mod packs. So the next quest here are for stone and other stones. Regular stone is just four pebbles. So if we just do something like this, we get a regular piece of stone. Uh, the other quest just wants us to do the same with diorite, granite, and andesite. Beautiful, we'll claim those rewards. Uh, how are we doing right now? We've got 34 C books, so we're actually fairly close to uh, being able to get this scale if we want it, and uh, you know, bypassing the uh, the toxic air up on, uh, on the surface. Uh, we then have a stone hammer quest. Using a hammer, you can turn some blocks into others. So the stone hammer, uh, I'm gonna assume the recipe has been tweaked. Normally it's two cobblestone and two sticks, although maybe it's not. Oh no, yeah, it has, okay, cool. So it's two stone and two sticks, perfect. And with this, what we can do is we can break certain blocks down into other blocks. Uh, this one here says breaking stone with a hammer or a pickaxe will drop cobblestone. Of course, breaking stone with a pickaxe is just a vanilla Minecraft thing. So uh, I feel like we might as well save the durability on our hammer and do this with our pickaxe. From there though, we should, I believe, be able to break this cobblestone down further using the hammer. At least that's usually how that works. So if we drop this down and break it with the old hammer, oh no, okay, so they've tweaked that. All right, that's interesting. We're gonna have to figure out what we can actually use the, uh, the hammer for. We can turn logs into wood chippings. We can turn smooth stone into gravel. Ah, so we'd have to smelt the stone first and then we can, uh, we can acquire gravel, that's interesting. We can also break down prismarine into prismarine shards and crystals, uh, netherrack into crushed netherrack, granite into crushed granite, diorite into crushed diorite, and andesite into crushed andesite. There is a quest here that does tell us part of that. Uh, it says uh, crushed stones. Crushed stones can be used. So uh, let's quickly grab those three that we just made. I feel like we might as well go ahead and crush those down for the sake of the quest. Over in this direction, we have a quest for compressed cobblestone, which is uh, just nine cobblestone crafted together. And also a quest for a stone wand, which allows you to build a little bit faster. So if we're going to get nine cobblestone we're gonna have to get nine regular stone and break all of that stone down so i think chat that we are basically here gonna have to get a bunch more dirt and sift that dirt until we have enough cobblestone so basically we're just gonna have to get uh, some more trees going to get even more uh, even more leaves someone did just point out that we should make sure we don't run out of saplings um i did i was down to my last sapling there if you do run out of saplings while playing this pack, uh, in the quest book, there is an emergency items button. Uh, if you press this, you do have to wait 30 seconds, but when the timer is up, it will give you a sampling. Uh, because if you 
do run out of saplings, then you kind of can't progress with the pack. So uh, do bear that in mind. If you do lose a sapling, you don't have to restart. You can just use the emergency item button. So a bit of dirt sifting later, we now have nine more stones. Let's go ahead and drop at least six of those. And we can break them all at the same time using FTB Ultimine. Boom. And that should be everything we need for a compressed cobblestone. It is beautiful. From there, we have a quest to make a strainer base. So this is made using two sieves, one wooden hopper, one compressed cobblestone, and four planks. And then following that, we also need a survivalist strainer. Uh, this is made using a string mesh and four sticks. Okay, cool. So we'll start with the strainer base. We should have, I think, pretty much everything we need here. We've got a ton of wood. Uh, so let's go ahead and do something like this. I'm going to make a bunch of chests because I feel like we're going to need quite a lot of these hoppers here. We need at least six to make uh, these two. And then we need a seventh one to actually make the uh, strainer itself. And we're probably going to want to make multiple strainers, uh, I would imagine, fairly soon here. And then as for the survivalist strainer, again, we're going to have to do something like this. Get one, two, three, four, five vines. Craft those up with four string. And boom, a survivalist strainer. So if I'm not mistaken... What we have to do here is to place the strainer in water and then from there place the survivalist strainer in the strainer base. So if we were to head down to this lower level here and let's say that we place down the strainer, I think maybe like right about here. Oh, we maybe have to do something like this. Oh, hold on. This is, pr th this is probably going to be easier if I do it from the surface. Let's do that. There we go. So the strainer is now down and under water. It is a two block tall structure, so you'd have to have space above where you're placing it. And from there, we can then put the survivalist strainer in. And then now, if we right click in here, we should see stuff happening. You'll see there's a progress bar going up. And if we look at the survivalist strainer here, we press U, we can see that uh, from the strainer, we're going to pick up items. So basically, uh, each strainer and there are multiple strainers, by the way, on the right here. Uh, we have the basic strainer. We can upgrade it in the future. But uh, each strainer has a certain number of uses. Uh, the basic tier here has 120 uses. So you put it into the strainer base, and it will generate 120 items. Which item you get is random. Uh, if we hold shift here, you'll see there is a percentage chance on every single one of these. So uh, one in three times, you're going to get a stick. Uh, one in six times, you're going to get a shell uh, or string. And then the seagrass, sponge, name tag, glass bottle, leather, ink sack, turtle egg, and saddle. So these are all of the things that we can get from the survivalist strainer. Uh, we got an egg there right out of the gate and some string. The thing that we're really looking for here is the sponge, because the sponge is going to allow us uh, to begin clearing out areas and thus going to allow us to actually start expanding out our base, right? Um, and we can also dry it out in the furnace to then reuse it later on down the line, which is super nice. So uh, we also have a quest to get a glass bottle, uh, presumably. Yeah, that is something we can get from the strainer. Over here, we have a different kind of strainer, the fisherman strainer. This guy is made using four vines and a string mesh. So a very similar recipe here. And with this guy, we can get fish. Which doesn't seem particularly useful just yet. I don't know if the fish are required for certain recipes later on down the line. Uh, but right now, I don't really think we need food too much, so we can probably hold off on uh, on progressing down here just yet. Now, over at the bottom left, we have uh, two quests yet to be done, one for sawdust and one for a cardboard box. So I believe earlier, we saw that we can get sawdust by hammering down a log. So if we do something like this and like this, yeah, we get uh, wooden chippings, which I'm pretty sure is... Uh, the same thing as sawdust, they're just named differently, but uh, the game treats them as being the same. And uh, the final quest on that uh, little line there is to make a cardboard box, which is an item from Mechanism that you can make with four sawdust, uh, or four wood chippings. Like so. And this is a super nifty item that uh, basically allows you to move any block in the game without changing that block's data, if that makes sense. Um, basically... It allows us to move things like chests without losing the inventory of the chest. So right now there's stuff in here. Normally, of course, if I were to break this chest, it would spew its items everywhere. If I first put the cardboard box on it by right-clicking, I can then go ahead and break the cardboard box with the chest inside of it, put it back down, let's say, over here, 
shift right click to get the cardboard box off and boom we still have the exact same chest with all of the same stuff that was inside it before and we didn't lose anything which is super nice uh, it just makes it a lot easier to move things like this it's also super useful to move things like spawners um, maybe later on in the series we could head through to the nether and uh, use this on a blaze spawner if we need to do any kind of mob spawning um, or blaze gathering in the future uh, for now though i will go ahead and move this back because we don't really want our chest away from the crafting station We'll also claim the rewards here. And outside of the stone wand quest, which should be fairly easy to do, we're almost done with this quest line here. So a stone wand, uh, nice and easy, is two sticks and one cobblestone. The stone wand allows you to put down multiple blocks at a time, essentially. So uh, if we do something uh, like this, we could then use the wand uh, to put down multiple wood at the same time. So it's useful for building bigger platforms and, uh, and bigger rooms in the future. Let's do a quick check to see if we don't have a sponge. We don't, unfortunately. We are getting some nice uh, trash <laughs> in this uh, strainer base here. And uh, we probably do want to set up a few more strainer bases, uh, maybe sooner rather than later. But uh, before we do that, let's have a look at some of the other quest lines here. We have storage drawers, which are super nifty, one of my favorite mods here. Uh, these are made with chests, and the default storage drawer is six planks and a chest. You get an oak drawer one by one. That's this quest right here. And this is basically like a chest, but it can only hold one item, but it can hold up to 2,048 of that item. And going forward in the future, you can upgrade it uh, with a multitude of, of upgrades that allow you to uh, increase the storage even further. But uh, for now, at least, what we could do is we could take our oak planks and just drop all of those in there. You can even make some more if we wanted to. Drop all those in there. And if we press shift, you'll see in the top left there uh, that we have 350 planks uh, in this drawer here. Not super useful just yet because we don't really have that many of, of any one given item. But as we go forward and we start to get massive amounts of cobblestone or wood or dirt or anything like that, uh, being able to store them in these nice compact storage drawers that can hold more than a regular chest would becomes super useful. Uh, there are also other variants you can make. Uh, there are two by two drawers. These drawers can hold two items. So as opposed to one drawer that can hold 2,048 items, this drawer can hold two items but only 1,024 of each item. And then going even further than that, there is a four drawer. Uh, this can hold four items, but only 512 of each item. So they all hold 2,048 total, uh, but it's just one, two, or four items total. We'll come back to this quest line. I think at some point in the future, we will want to make some of these uh, other items. Uh, and trim doesn't really have much of a use for us just yet, but again, I'll explain what that does uh, as and when we need it. Uh, the other quest in the Welcome to the Sea quest line here is Tinkers. Uh, we've actually completed a few of these quests already uh, because we made that crafting station here. Um, but, but for those who don't know, Tinkers is a mod that allows you to make custom tools. Uh, it's a pretty nifty mod and it allows you to upgrade those tools as well. So uh, to get started here, we need to make a part builder and a part chest. So uh, the part builder is made with two blanks and two patterns. And the part chest is made with four sticks, one chest, one plank, and one pattern. So uh, let's go ahead and I guess initially... We'll do this to make that part builder, preferably with patterns and not with leaves. And then uh, if we get a few more blank patterns here, like so, uh, we should then be able to fairly easily make the pot chest as well. Nice. Uh, so for now, we'll go ahead and throw these down maybe over here. We'll go ahead and claim these rewards. And then we have the Tinker Station, used to build basic tools and tool parts. Uh, this guy, very similar recipe. Uh, we need three blank patterns and four planks, like that. Perfect. So I believe this is slightly different to how it used to be uh, in older versions of Tinkers. Uh, so now, for example, uh, let's say we want to make a basic wooden pickaxe, which is what it's recommending we make here. Inside of the part builder, uh, you used to have to go through something called a stencil table. Now, all you have to do is put the pattern in and then put in the material and then you click on what you want. Let's say we want a binding and we take it. Uh, and when you make it, it actually uses up a pattern. So going forward, we're going to need a lot more patterns than we did previously. Like I said, it used to be that you'd make a stencil table, uh, make a stencil of the part that you wanted and then that was it, you were done. Uh, no longer is that the case. Now you have to have patterns uh, so let's get a pickaxe head and let's also get a tool rod. Those are the three items we need to make a pickaxe. And now over in the Tinker Station, uh, you'll see by default, we can make these five tools. And we are after a pickaxe, which is made of a pickaxe head, 
a tool binding and a tool handle. Now, these are all made of wood. Uh, the whole point of Tinkers is that you can really customize your tool, right? Uh, so we could, if we wanted to, have made like uh, the wooden binding out of stone or out of obsidian or out of iron or diamond, right? There's a whole host of different materials that you can make things out of, and each of those materials have different effects, right? Uh, the wooden tools here, for example, have cultivated, which is economical. The tool practically grows more, mater uh, more material when repairing. So I believe this means that the tool kind of slowly repairs itself over time. Uh, you also see we have a bunch of attributes on the left, the durability, the attack, the attack speed, the mining level, the mining speed, the number of upgrades still left that we can put on the tool, and the abilities. That's a lot of information. Right now, we basically have a standard wooden pickaxe. Uh, the benefit of a normal Minecraft wooden pickaxe is that this can be repaired. So if we were to do something like this, normally when a tool breaks, you have to make a new one. With Tinkers, you can take your tool and repair it. Like so. So you put it back in the tool station with the material used to make it, and it will repair the pickaxe. Of course, this is a bit of a waste because we've only lost one durability, and we don't need to repair it yet. But once it gets lower, we can use our wood to repair it as opposed to making a new one every single time. Oh, I'm being told that uh, things have changed with wood. So it used to be the wooden tools slowly repaired themselves over time. I'm being told that Cultivated now increases the tool's durability when you repair it. So does that count in here? Like if I repair this, does the durability go up? I guess it might once you repair it more. Like I only repaired a little bit that right, but uh, maybe over time that will increase its durability as I repair it over and over again. And uh, looking back here, the final quest is to make a, uh, a stone pickaxe head, which we should be able to do, I think, fairly easily. Um, it might be two stone. Yeah, you'll see uh, in the top right there, it does say pattern cost. So uh, we need two stone to make this work. Thankfully, um, we do have a little bit of dirt here. And so if we just quickly sift one or two of these, we can get uh, some stone pebbles, craft those up, and that should be everything we need for the stone axe head. And one of the really nifty things about Tinkers is that you can upgrade pre-existing tools. So we can take our wooden pickaxe here, and I'm and unless things have changed, yeah, we can add the stone pickaxe head to it, which as you can see, is gonna take our durability from 60 to 130. It's gonna take our mining speed from two up to four. It's gonna double the mining speed, um, as well as increasing our mining level, which basically determines what you can break. For example, wooden pickaxes can't break diamond ore, uh, or even iron ore uh, just yet. Uh, now we're up to the stone level, and we also get a bit more uh, attack damage as well. And we get stone bound. Your tool absolutely loves stone. The tool mines faster as it wears out, but does less damage. Ah, so as the durability gets lower, it's gonna mine faster, but it's also gonna do less damage, which is probably fine. We don't really wanna be using that as a, as a weapon, I don't think. Uh, but that's the Tinker's quest line taken care of. Um, in fairness chat, I think we, we might be able to finish the, uh, the welcome to the sea quest line here within the first stream, depending on how things go. Let's go quickly check on our strainer. We have the sponge and we also have a glass bottle, which is super nice. Uh, the sponge, I think you have to be a bit careful, or, or a bit deliberate with how you use it, because just placing this down in the ocean and then picking it back up, obviously, if you place it down in the ocean, it will suck up a bunch of water, but then because there's water everywhere, it will instantly fill back in, right? So I think if we want to build, like, new adjacent rooms, what we're probably going to want to do is, like, get some water breathing by drinking a bowl of water, go out, kind of build the box or build the sphere that we want to, our room to be in. And then once we've built the enclosure, then we can go in with our sponge and kind of clear out all of the water, right? I think that's probably gonna be the best way to go about things. Given how close we are to finishing here, let's uh, go ahead and see if we can't get these last few quests completed. So the Fisherman's Strainer, this required um, a regular mesh. So it's something like this. Oh, I keep doing this wrong. It's this, one, two, three, four, five, uh, with this. This is the recipe that has the plus ship. There we go. Uh, so the fisherman strainer, I believe, was that with four more vines. Something like this. It was indeed perfect. Following on from that quest, we have a quest for worms here, which can be crafted using silkworms. Perfect. And from there, we have a bait pot quest, which makes worms more efficient as bait. So this requires four fish and a wooden hopper. Okay. So uh, I guess there are two ways we could go about this. We could either uh, use the fisherman strainer to get the four fish, or we could do a bit of fishing. Um, I feel like we probably could just temporarily swap out this strainer for this strainer and uh, go and do some other things while we wait for this. Oh, I forget. The fisherman strainer actually requires bait. So we do have to put like a, a worm in here in order for the fisherman strainer to work. 
I don't know if it requires one bit per use. I don't think it does, although I could be wrong on that. So I think, chat, that we might as well uh, head on up to the surface here and do a little bit of fishing. And for fish later, I'm assuming we can use the different fish here. I think I assume all of these will work just fine, as that should be everything we need for a bit pot. So a wooden hopper with one, two, three, four fish gets us the bit pot, which we can now put directly into the bit slot. And uh, oh, of course. So the way this works is it actually, unfortunately, doesn't count as bait, uh, but it reduces bait consumption. So uh, what we have to do is get more silkworms. Thankfully, we do have a ton of them. Turn those into regular worms and then use those as bait. But having the bait pot should make our worms go further. Potentially. Let's go ahead and claim all of those quests. So the only quest now in chapter one that we have not completed or in the wooden tech that we haven't completed is the flopper. So for that, we need three wooden hoppers and a wooden barrel. That seems very doable, chat. We should have, I think, everything it takes here for three wooden hoppers. Uh, we totally do. And we are going to have to get one more wooden barrel here because right now we're using all of our other barrels for dirt making. But uh, once we have that, that should be everything for the flopper. And I think, oh, of course, we're missing the... Uh, the saplings, yes. Okay, so all we have to do now then is uh, get some of our leaves and quickly sift those to get all of the saplings. So we need spruce, birch, dark oak, acacia, and jungle. Uh, right now, we have spruce, and that's it. <laughs> Once you have the uh, the acorn, by the way, as it mentioned in the quest book, you can just put it down, and uh, boom, you have the sapling. So uh, let's do a quick bit of sifting here. Uh, the book does mention it. Uh, we could, if we wanted to, put down multiple sieves, up to nine in total. If you put them down in a little in a little three by three grid, uh, you can sift nine items at a time. So every time you right click, it will fill. Uh, it'll take nine items out of your inventory. In this case, nine leaves, and it will sift all of them at the same time. Uh, essentially, you know, increasing the uh, sifting speed by nine times. I think we actually have everything though. So there's uh, acacia, birch, dark oak, and jungle. Nice. And that should be this quest line complete. It is. Nice. I was waiting for that uh, wonderful sound effect. So the only thing that, we're, that we've not done yet, outside of the challenges, of course, in chapter one, is craft up a two draw, a four draw, and trim. Um, all of which I think we can do with just planks, right? So the four draw requires four chests and five planks, but you do get four of them at, the, at a time, which is very nice. And then the two draw uh, requires two chests and seven planks. One, two, and boom. And then the trim, which again is not really too useful for us just yet, but will be useful in the future, is just the planks and some sticks. And boom, that is all of chapter one done, I think, outside of the, uh, the challenges here. So challenge-wise, there is a quest to get 64 of each log, to get 64 stone, 32 patterns, 64 dirt, some sea junk, a compressed stone hammer, which I believe is nine regular stone hammers. It is. One of each fish, which are actually fairly close to, and a spider eye, a bone, and a rotten flesh. Hostile mobs will spawn around 24 blocks away from you. So presumably, with for this quest, what we want to do is we want to head up to the surface, uh, maybe build out a little bit, uh, build a bit of a platform, and wait for mobs to spawn there. I feel like we can probably do these quests, Chet. These challenges, they don't seem all that difficult. Some of them may be a little bit tedious, but for the most part, uh, they seem fairly, fairly doable. Someone in the Twitch chat is reminding me, and uh, I should pass this information on to, to people watching at home. Uh, if you want to claim all of your rewards, so right now we have uh, rewards that are yet to be claimed, like this reward here, and that's it, I guess. Uh, but if you have a reward that needs claiming, uh, you'll have a little exclamation mark here and here, and of course on the quest uh, itself. So here, uh, you can just click this button up here and it will claim all of your rewards at once. So you don't have to find it and then click the reward button. You can just click that. Uh, of course, just then I only had the one quest, but if you have multiple quests to claim, you can just click it and uh, it does work quite nicely. 
So I think what I'll do here, chat, is uh, I think we should definitely go ahead and make a hatchet, a tinker's hatchet, so we don't have to keep making uh, what making ours manually. That is going to mean getting a little bit more stone here, because I think we should probably make it uh, with a stone head. I think it's going to be better than making it with uh, a wooden head. So boom and boom. And unless it's changed, I think the hatchet also requires a binding and a rod. It does indeed. Uh, for now, we'll make those out of wood. I think that's probably the best material for us here. So you and you. And once again, just like with the pickaxe, we can do head, rod, and binding. And now we have a an X that works uh, in the same way as our stone pickaxe. It's repairable and upgradable in the future. So I think we'll work on these uh, quests here. The first and easiest quest, I think, is going to be to make 32 patterns. That seems very doable. Uh, all we have to do there is get, uh, like, 11 of these. One, 11 lots of the recipe, that is. That's going to get us to 33. There we go. And that is challenge one complete. Then getting 64 dirt is also going to be super useful. Um, it might be worth, chat, doing a little bit of automation here because... We can kind of uh, kill two birds with one stone here because we need to get all of the logs, right? We need to get a lot of logs. In doing so, we can get a lot of leaves and we can use those leaves to make all of the dirt. So one thing that we should probably do to make our lives a little easier is make a couple of hoppers. Let's say we do six. What we could then do is we could make, uh, of course, all of these into hoppers. What we could then do is move these barrels here and do something like this, where we have the barrels on top of the hoppers and then hoppers again on top of the barrels because presumably what we can then do is uh, split our oak logs, uh, sorry, our oak leaves, put those in. Those should then be fed down directly into the barrels, which will then turn into dirt, and then we'll place the dirt down into the, uh, the hoppers. And if we really wanted to take it one step further, we could maybe have like a, uh, a storage drawer like here. And like I said, if we really wanted to push it, uh, although we are running a little low on, uh, on planks, I was going to say we could make like uh, two more hoppers and have like this hopper. I guess, uh, actually, yeah, we could just move this, right? If we just move these two to the side, we can have them all feed into that drawer. We don't have to go through some uh, convoluted system. Something like this. So now all of the dirt should make its way into, uh, into this drawer. So I guess we might as well start with oak logs and then move on from there. Given that we have so many oak saplings. So that's actually all of the oak logs taken care of. Beautiful. Uh, and now we have a ton of leaves. Let's go ahead and put a stack of leaves into each of these. So that's going to make us a good chunk of the dirt that we're looking for. And uh, now let's go ahead and get uh, 64 of the rest of these, which might take a little longer because we are going to have to work up. Also, I don't know if we can build a jungle sapling in here. And by build, I mean grow. What we might have to do, Chet, is we might have to head on up to the surface. Uh, oh, no, never mind. Look at that. It does work. Not too long later, uh, we're still working on getting uh, all of the woods. So right now, we just have jungle and oak, but we do have 64 dirt here. Uh, by the way, with drawers, uh, storage drawers, you can left-click to get one item at a time, or you can shift left-click to get a stack at a time. Uh, but that is the quest complete for 64 dirt. Uh, we were just waiting for that to uh, complete, because now we need to uh, sift some of this dirt to be able to repair the uh, stone axe that we have here. Okay, so that is the logs quest complete. We did have to come up to the surface to grow uh, the dark oak trees because you need to put down four saplings and they grow uh, quite tall. Uh, but that is now done. And I will pick up this dirt here just to make sure that our uh, skyward view is not uh, obstructed. So what else do we need to do here? There was a quest for sea junk, which we might be able to just instantly complete here. So right at the bottom, uh, do we have a saddle, a name tag, an ink sack, and a shell? Uh, we have a saddle, we have a name tag, we have an ink sack, and we have a shell. If I, oh, you can't put things back in here. Okay, I'm, that's me trying to, <laughs> trying to put things back because I don't want them in my inventory. It turns out you cannot do that. Uh, let's clear that a bit. By the way, middle mouse button. If your inventory is a mess, you can middle mouse button. It will try and organize it the best it can. It'll put all of the, uh, the same items in the uh, same place. A uh, quick little tip there. If we quickly grab that uh, shell, though, that should be everything for sea junk what else do we have here so in terms of fish i think we just have to go and do some fishing uh, 64 stone man <laughs> it's gonna be a bit of a pain 
Uh, it's very doable, but I think what we're going to have to do is just get a lot more dirt, and I think it's definitely going to be in our best interest to make more sieves here. Oh, chat is correct. We do have the fish. Never mind. I'm a, I'm a fool. They were collected by our uh, fisherman's bait. That is my bad, chat. Uh, I will, of course, go ahead and claim the uh, tokens as well here while we're at it. Perfect. Uh, so, yeah, we need to get uh, 64 stone. Once we have 64 stone, we can fairly easily make the uh, compressed hammer. Uh, for that, we just need 18 stone that we then craft into a compressed hammer. And there we go. Eight more sieves. From there, we need to get uh, eight more meshes, which is mostly just a bunch of leaves. So uh, let's get our saplings back down. And we probably also want to get another chest down here because ours is, uh, is filling up rather quickly. So we do need some more string here. Let's get a few more silkworms in. Uh, one silkworm will do the job, but you can speed this up just a little bit by putting a few silkworms in, because of course that will cause it to uh, to start spreading the infestation faster. And given that these silkworms are so easy to get, I see no reason uh, really not to. Uh, once we have all of the meshes that we need, uh, we can begin sifting dirt. Uh, we have over a stack of dirt now, and uh, we can also, I guess, come over here and begin uh, making even more dirt, because we are going to need quite a bit of it if we're going to get a stack of, uh, of stone. And a little while later, we should be able to make uh, some more vines. Uh, this time we need, if we're going to make eight more meshes, that means that we need 40 vines, which unfortunately we actually can't make just yet. Uh, we can go ahead and make six here. Uh, unfortunately, these do not stack, which makes them a little tedious to deal with, but we can begin filling these in. And I guess we're going to have to do a quick bit more tree growing here to get those last couple of vines. Ah oh, yes, one of my meshes did get placed in the chest there because I was full on uh, inventory space, which is another nice feature of uh, the crafting station here. But uh, that should be pretty much everything, right? I think we now we just need 10 vines, craft those into two meshes. And now going forward, if we were to uh, kind of dump most of our inventory uh, into these chests now, we could grab the dirt that we have and also, let's get rid of you for now. We don't want any more trees. Uh, but we can grab some of our dirt. And now, as we sift, we're going to sift nine dirt simultaneously. So we should be sifting significantly faster. Okay, so I think that should almost certainly, yeah, be 64. Whew, okay, that took a little while. But we are pretty much good to go here. So let's grab the sticks. Let's do this and get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine hammers. We can then uh, craft all of those up into a compressed hammer. And the idea be uh, behind the compressed hammer is that it works in the exact same way as a regular hammer, but it can break down compressed blocks. So for example, the compressed smooth stone here, which is a custom block added, it's not vanilla, but uh, we can craft uh, nine smooth stone into a compressed smooth stone. And then from there, we could hammer that down uh, using one durability of the compressed stone hammer, uh, and we would get nine gravel back. And of course, if we put down multiple compressed smooth stone and then vein mine using the compressed stone hammer, we can get a ton of gravel very quickly. Um, so that's kind of the use case for that. And at that point, Chad, the only thing standing between us and uh, some custom blocks from Chisel is one spider eye, one bone, and one rotten flesh. So uh, right now it's the middle of the day. It's quite possible that there's like a creeper or a spider up there that spawned last night. We should probably go ahead and make a broadsword here. Again, I think we'll make this in basically the same way we've made our two previous tools, that being with uh, wooden parts and a stone head. So unlike the other tools, the broadsword is a blade and two handles. So we'll take another wooden tool handle and then we'll go ahead and make the stone blade this one right here not the broad blade we can't use that just yet and then back in here we can do rod rod and blade and we have a stone broadsword which again can be upgraded uh, as and when we see fit so now we just need to uh actually get some mobs to spawn which could be uh easier said than done Okay, bones acquired. Hey, there's a spider eye. 
So now we're just missing a rotten flesh. Hey, and there we go. We got the rotten flesh. Nice. Cool. We gotta stop jumping because there is toxic air up there, which is not worth it. But I believe, chat, that as soon as we claim the central challenge quest, that being this one, no, well, this one, and then this one right here, check, and boom. We have completed the uh, challenge section of chapter one, and we were also given a chisel station uh, and some science block and yellow hazel block. So these are from the mod chiseled, which I believe is to be uh, like a 1.16 kind of replacement for the mod chisel which is yet to port over um and you know presumably we can use this to uh, to chisel up some of our blocks if we wanted to uh, we don't really have much space for it up here uh, at the moment let's kind of hide it back here for now uh, so if we wanted to we could like change our stone to look different it's like a bunch of different uh, options here they look a lot like the default chisel options so i assume that's kind of where they've pulled inspiration there but if we go to at uh, chiseled you can see there's a bunch of different like variations on pre-existing blocks or the woods and whatnot so uh, it just adds more stuff for you to, uh, to build with later on down the line, which is super nice. Did this already have stone in it? Did I just get 64 free stone? I guess I did, right? That's probably one of the rewards from this quest. It did say, uh, like, chiseled station plus NBT. So it looks like it has 64 stone in it. Not quite sure if that's intentional or not. Maybe it is as a reward for completing all of chapter one, but we've done it. Welcome to the Sea is complete. Next time, chat, we will come back and we will begin the moving on up quest line. We'll begin working with uh, even more tinkers in the form of the old smeltery here. Uh, we're going to get a furnace. We're also going to start getting uh, working towards dust and clay. Uh, we're going to upgrade our barrels, upgrade our meshes, and also work with uh, some ceramics as well. Get some lava, uh, hopefully get an actual uh, cobblestone generator up and running so we don't have to sift quite so much dirt uh, to get all of our stone. Uh, and yeah, we'll move on further forward. We've got mods like uh, Mystical Agriculture, so we can grow our resources in the future if we want. Uh, we have even more Tinker's Construct. We've got Mechanism. We've got the Twilight Forest and Ocean Exploration, which sounds interesting. Uh, we have even more Sifting. We've got a mod that I think is called Pipes. Yeah, Pipes with a Z, of course, to make it cool. Uh, thermal Expansion. We've got Advanced Machinery. We have uh, Industrial Foregoing. Uh, more Mechanism, of course. Refined Storage. Extreme Reactors. And then uh, the end game, I believe, is um, Advanced Rockets, right? We've got Space, Emerald Sieving, and of course, that shop as well. For now, though, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.